Hello everybody, welcome back to Bedrock Survival with Fix. We're not working here today, but I am here because I have created myself a little bit of a conundrum. And what I mean by that is that I need a lot more stone to work on the Guardian Temple. And that's really where I want to head today, is go back out there and work on more of that. The problem is, I don't have any more stone. I, I'm fine with the water level being sort of where it is now. I wouldn't mind it being up another level, but I'm trusting once this place gets a lot darker and... Oh, hey, skeleton. <laughs> okay. Uh, once it gets a lot darker and I get a lot more nature and all that stuff, that all this is going to look uh, just fine. Um, you know, there's a lot of work, obviously, around here that needs to be done. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding in little uh, cliffs, so these are all going to be covered up and going sort of up in the sky. That's not happening now though the problem is right now at this moment i don't have any source of of uh stone right now uh, because these can't go really any lower obviously and this is my big dig so i have two options one i can start the project for way off in the future let me show you where that is it's right out the front door here what i want to do eventually and this is we're talking this is far off uh, in the future, but I could start the landscaping digging bit now if I wanted to. You know, in fact, let me turn off, uh, let me turn off RTX so we can see a little further. Okay, this is my plan. What I want to do is I want to have a waterfall eventually coming off of this, and that would, that means this whole thing I want to have terraformed uh, to go sort of on the other side of this, which is going to be a uh, taller peak mountain right there. So, you know, I talked about uh, expanding the castle to be up there, but I, I think I may just turn this into a mountain instead in order to block the view a little bit. And I think that could be actually a cooler effect in general. So what I'm thinking I'd like to do is I'd like to have a... Um, boy, it, it's really difficult to describe. I'd like to have a big waterfall coming down and then landing in a pool or a pond or something that's actually up, up higher uh, than... Uh, not, qu not quite to the top, but up higher than you might think. Like, up pretty close to the top. And that water's going to come down, and it's going to hit into this pool right about where my cursor is about now. And then that is going to trickle down in cascading waterfalls, boom, 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 into this valley. What valley? Exactly. <laughs> and that's where the next dig project comes. I'd like to make this whole thing into a valley. Uh, it's not required. I don't necessarily need to. I don't know how much it would add, but I think it would be really cool. I want to make a, uh, I want to make sort of a slow transition down and then make a ravine from right here. And, th and then, but it's going to have to be fairly wide. So this is going to be my next big dig. And the ravine is going to go the entire way into the jungle over there. So it's going to be a big one. So I think what maybe I should do is move my, move my beacons maybe, or I should maybe clear out all this wood either way this is a enormous enormous grind that's about to take place here um this is like pre-grind grind right like i gotta i gotta take out these uh these these trees first so that i can start to actually create this valley that i want to make yeah you know it's gonna be awesome i think it's worth i think it's worth it so i think we should just probably get started so i brought my i brought these shulkers I am going to start taking down these trees right through the middle, leading right kind of to that village. That village is probably going to have to go bye-bye, and we'll head right into the jungle. That's the plan for the uh, the big valley. I think it'll be cool, but yikes, man. Yikes. Well, I'll see you in a little bit. I don't know how dark it is right now on YouTube. It's probably very, very dark. So if you might, can't see what I'm doing right now, I just want to show it just for a quick second. I am uh, finally, finally, finally replacing my creeper farm. Well, not replacing, just fixing it. Uh, in Bedrock, for a long time, buttons would act as a, a mob tricker thing where they would think that it's a full block and walk off the edge. That no longer is the case. Now it's the same as Java. So I have to come back through here, ditch all these buttons, and, and add in all the trap doors. So I'm just replacing it with all all this wood that I'm taking down from this uh, upcoming valley, I'm just uh, coming here and just replacing it. And uh, yeah, it's a lot. Trapdoors are a lot more expensive <laughs> than than our buttons, but well, it's got to be done. I need gunpowder. I'm running pretty darn low. I have only a few more stacks of rockets, and then uh, yikes, man. All right then, well, I just did a long live stream. Uh, well, not that long, just a couple hours, and we cleared out uh, basically all of this. This whole area is pretty well cleaned up. I may need to take this back a little bit more uh, or not. It's very hard to tell right now, but I think we're in a good place to actually start laying down where the beacons are gonna be because that is gonna dictate sort of where this, um, I don't know what I'm gonna call it, ravine, I, I suppose, where this ravine is actually gonna go. So. 
The next thing I gotta do, look at this. Art oh my goodness, are you kidding me with that? <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, so okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take down this beacon and, oops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, take down this beacon and then we will, uh, I guess we'll figure out where we can put them that that I'll get the full effect for as long as I possibly can. That's gonna be the key. I, I you know I'd like to have them all close enough where they're not really overlapping, but I am getting full beacon effect for this entire dig because it's gonna be huge, and I don't want it to be sort of you know running back and forth to get a little beacon buff, right? So okay, so let's do that, and then uh, yeah, I guess I'll meet you back over there, and we'll figure out where these blocks are gonna go. Yeah, let's take a look and see uh, see if I did if I counted right now. I, I'm pretty sure beacons range is, is 50, 50 blocks, I think. So I put these uh, about eighty five blocks apart from each other, thinking that it would be covered in each beacon. Uh, now I'm gonna start this dig around probably here or so, right about here ish. And we're gonna go the whole way over to those trees and the whole way over to these trees. I decided that that's big enough because this is gonna be, we're gonna be on this for so long. And the problem is, I, I'm here for stone, right? That's the main thing that I'm here for. The real problem is, is that I'm gonna have to clear a lot of dirt just to get to the stone that I wanna get to. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, another thing I wanna think about as well while I'm digging all this up is, um, well, I gotta think about shape, but I also gotta remember that there's gonna be a eventual water sort of cascading down here. Like, I don't know exactly how high it's gonna be, so I wanna have, I don't wanna do more than I need to do for one thing, right? Um, and for another thing, I wanna basically keep this all in levels, so I'll be taking off, uh, I'll, I'll be leveling it basically first. If you remember, if you go back long enough, if you remember how I did that before I built the mountain over it, it's gonna be kind of the same thing, where I don't, I'm not gonna take off, uh, straight. I'm gonna take off all of a certain peak, and then all of the next peak, and so on and so forth. So, what we'll do first thing is we'll go kind of around this way, and just lay out basically the, the, the beginning of where this is gonna be so I can see it, and then I'll know where to stop whenever I'm digging. But, it does appear that we have to go to sleep now. Cool. I've been a digging machine over the last two days. This may stretch into about a week. Luckily, again, thank goodness I have a buffer of videos, so there isn't like a, a long period of time without anything. But, but yeah, I, I have. Uh, I've been digging a lot, and let me take you up and show you sort of a. Uh, well, where we're at right now, I'm still trying to sort of flatten out the, some of the area here. But uh, if you take a look up here, let's let's get a little fly up. Oh, nope, that's that's not how you fly. What happened there? <laughs> My light just stopped. Took a break. It's fine. Uh, so if you take a look down here, you look over here and you can sort of see the shape starting to develop. And uh, yeah, and you know, if you know me, if you know me at all, then you know that uh, no, no large project would be complete without a chess monster. That's right. We have a new one developing right here. This will eventually turn into a building as I do. And uh, you can see this is already my third double chest, not counting all of the stuff that I've already taken back to the chess monster in the middle of the, the uh, mountain <laughs> base. But yeah, you can see it. So what will happen just like the last dig, this will start really heavy on tons and tons and tons of dirt and grass. And then it will slowly transition into tons and tons and tons of cobble and smooth stone. Cause generally I, Whenever I'm mining, I just use, you know, both pickaxes until they're depleted. So I'll get roughly equal parts um, uh, cobble and smooth stone and then uh, go repair, you know. So, okay, well, I'll keep going to see what I can do. Since the last uh, clip and I've done a lot of digging, tree removal, uh, sorting and all that kind of stuff. So let me just take you through. All of these are all full of, of dirt and grass the whole way up to... Uh, here like all but two of these double chests are all full um, here. I have I think five full of uh, either smooth stone or cobble maybe Yeah, five double chests full of that and a bunch of other materials, but you can see this is where we're at I just finished basically two two full layers down from from the even flat that we were before and you can just start to see what this ravine is going to be and it's going to be absolutely spectacular let me fly up to uh, my little hole in the wall so you can sort of see the direction it's going to go so with the waterfall coming down like right from this sort of flattened area of the uh of the the mountain 
uh, with the waterfall coming down, this is going to be so spectacular. Man. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Um, the waterfall is going to be coming down right there, hitting, and it's going to cascade into the valley, and the valley is just going to go off. Which, by the way, I learned something in my live stream. I learned that semicolon, boom. Semicolon is a one-tap turn-off ray tracing thing. Isn't that amazing? And now I get back to my 80 chunk render distance so you can see the full scope of it. It is going to continue that way. I just don't have any more beacons. Those are actually, I, I technically do have one more beacon, but I want to keep it out of the guardian farm for right now. Um, but yeah, so it's going to continue and it's going to go into the jungle uh, where it's going to sort of uh, level off and, and become a jungle, a large scale jungle temple castle at some point. But that's again, that's that's a year or two down the road. But you can see uh, the, the shape and the size and the scope. This is going to be where I get all of my stone from now on. I'm just going to be just here, just digging out every time I need more stone. Because right here is going to be another custom mountain at some point in the very near future, probably. Uh, but the biggest thing is right now, I want to get back out and I want to work on the Guardian Farm next episode. Not now, not today. But next episode, I want to get back in the Guardian Farm. The other thing I want to do is I want to finish off this mountain. So that's why I'm going to need all, all of the stone and... and even where there's grass, we're only about one layer from it being essentially just stone with dirt patches you know, for the most part. So it's going to be lots and lots and lots of stone soon. But I think the shape is cool. I think it's going to be it's going to be really nice uh, cliffs. I like that. It, I really, really like that. It's it, it's a slight diagonal. I think that's really cool. I like the shape, how it juts out. And already you can start to see the cliffs starting to uh, starting to happen. I tried to do a really nice, gradual, interesting sort of jagged um, cliff area. It's just starting because it's going to go down 30 or 40 blocks probably by the time we're ready to actually start building there uh so you know it took me several hours of digging just to dig out two blocks deep and that will go a little faster when there's not very much dirt but still it's going to take quite a while but this will be a great source of stone for uh really for quite a long time but i have one more thing i want to work on um today and i i want to start something that i i, I kind of got the idea from elder scrolls and many 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 other games but i've been really enjoying reading the books in elder scrolls and i've just been thinking wouldn't it be a cool thing to have books in this world? Because I don't always do a question or comment of the day in this world. Um, you know, it's just uh, it's it. What I hate to say, it is it is what it is. I just I just don't. Sometimes I don't get a comment that is a really interesting one for a question or comment of the day. But um, what I want to do is I want I want to do that more often. I either read a book, write a book, or do a question or comment of the day. So I want to read my first book today. So uh, let me go grab a book and we'll get written out and I will, uh, I'll show you what I'm thinking. So my plan is going to be to leave these books kind of all over the world. So if you grab a world download and you want to go around and learn about the history of Tovlin and about things that happened in this world, then you can just walk around. You find books. Some will be on lectern. Some will just be in random chests, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm thinking what I want to do with this very first book is put it in this church uh, right on the lectern because this book is a pretty it's a pretty important one. So let's throw this on there and let's read it. The History of Histories by Bruce Johnstone, Council of Events. Forward. I will shortly be leaving this world. 124 years is too long to live knowing what came before and what will likely come after. I am hopeful that the past, all of our great achievements and many of our great failures will die with me. It has been decreed by the king, his majesty, Earl II, that all of history after the Great Purge will be recorded in books. These shall be kept in houses of the people, reproduced as they may, so that our history will never again be housed in one place. Further, nothing of the time before the Purge here, so forth, to be known as the Dire Span, shall be recorded or passed verbally from generation to generation. He has wisely concluded that we, the citizens of Tovlin, are on our own and should live as such. I have seen many events over the long course of my life and have learned only one truth. We are all there is. Remembering our past is valuable, but only to a point. Dwelling on lost miracles leads only to depression and anger. There is only us and only now. The Council of Events has recorded uh, already are in our short tenure two major wars and more skirmishes than we can count. I beg of you, my friends, to learn from history in these books. There is no help from coming from gods above now or ever. I leave you in peace. So that's the first book uh, that I'm going to leave here in this world. And there's going to be a lot more where we're just going to talk about the history and talk about things that have happened in this world, like good and bad and otherwise that I think could be very, very interesting. So um, 
the one thing that I do also want to mention is I couldn't read the font, so I actually changed the font in the texture pack. So if you like this font, cool. The new font will be in the texture pack. If you hate it, all you have to do is just delete that font folder and you'll go back to the regular Minecraft font. But I think it's a lot easier to read, but it does change all the fonts in the game, including like a, a command things, your, your, your number, all that kind of stuff. But I, I still think it's, it's actually a lot easier to read for me that... I've never been a huge, huge fan of the Minecraft font, but especially when reading books, I find it to be very dif difficult. So that is going to wrap it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. We are all set to continue on in the future. So what I'm going to do between now and next episode is I'm going to gather up more stone. I have some, but I think I need more. And then we're going to get back to the gardening farm and really, truly get to work on it. It should be a lot of fun. I just need so much stone for all the big dig big giant building projects that we have coming. So that's what I'm going to be doing from here on out. I may do some more sort of late night live streams where I'm just digging, basically gathering materials. So if you're so interested, all you have to do is um, either join my Discord to get the notification, or you can just make sure that the bell is rung on the alert button. That way you'll get a little pop-up on your phone saying, hey, Fix is live. It will likely be late night, like 9, 30, or 10 p.m. Eastern. That's about the best I can do. Okay, we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for coming. I really do appreciate it, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.